Pop Evil. Tonight at the Orbit Room. This afternoon at Best Buy. You can buy this song, this album. Get it signed while you're there. We'll tell you more details about that. Brand new album came out Tuesday. It's called Onyx. You either bought it already or you're going to. You know, you know that. Hey, you know, it's a big deal. On the front of it, it says most anticipated release for 2013. And, and you know what? Absolutely, man. I think that's absolutely this true. This is great. Pop Evil in studio. Welcome back, guys. Thanks hey, for having me back. back. Yeah, welcome home. I figured, though, this time, I mean, I normally do a lot of the talking, yeah. so I want the other guys to do the talking. We talked about that. Good idea. Just talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we said this. We go, oh, man. What an idea. Lee's always bogarting the mic. I was listening, I was listening to you guys online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, Nick, you're up. Tell us everything we need, we need to know about the band. It's your yeah. show. Go ahead, Nick. Nick's up. Nick's up. Go. Nah. The band's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, now, now, this is pretty crazy, Nick, because we saw you, was it last summer? Right about the time that yes. you had joined, you had just gotten the, the call, you were Walmart. living in, yeah, at Fifth Third at, at, at Woodstock, or at Wingstock, rather. You were, yep, that's right. You had just gotten the call, you were working in Pittsburgh at a Best Buy, right? That is correct. And so now here we are, you know, close to the end of May, and you will be signing the, uh, the album with the rest of the band at a Best, Best Buy. Buy. That's a lot better. I mean, are you going to go and want to sell some monster cables or something while you're there? Yeah. <laughs> get the I might, I might have, have to try and contain sell? myself a bit. You he know? had that farmer's tan. Remember yeah. he had that farmer's tan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The farmer's tan's still here. Oh, Don't let him yeah. kid you about yeah. that. Yeah. Still got alive it. and oh, kicking. Oh, alive yeah. and kicking. Okay, good. Very good. <laughs> that's but, awesome. But that's all, I mean, that's crazy. I remember we were talking to you right before you guys went on, to st- went on stage, and we're like, so, okay, so how did this work out? And you're like, well... Uh, I think it was Chachi called you and said, hey, uh, do you know like all of our songs? <laughs> Could you learn them in one minute and then get on yeah. a plane and fly and play a show? That's kind of how it went, right? I'm exaggerating a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, but... in, in a nutshell, yeah. That's crazy. Jeez, man. That's, crazy. that's rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Well, I started to ask you guys this off the air and uh, got a part of an answer, but it was all crazy and the time was running out. So the new album Onyx came out on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Do you sweat it and watch the sales every day? or I mean, it's probably different for all five of you. I mean, what's that like? Or do you just know that you put your best into it, that it's a good album, that it's being well-reviewed? I'm guessing that that matters at least inside. I think that's definitely more important. And I think that uh, we can it just, it, I mean, there's been a lot of like, we're getting a lot of feedback from people that we've never gotten feedback before. Like we were kind of talking about it today. Uh, we all went to Starbucks and like we got a, uh, like an unprovoked, unsolicited tweet last night uh, from like Bumblefoot's wife. And so it's cool to see like yeah. people that we even look up to or have never come across that are like talking about the band now. And there's just a lot of excitement. I yeah. think we're all very proud of what we did. Which like, means they're listening to it and playing it for other people and right. saying, hey, check right. this out. That's, yeah. I mean, Buzz is probably better than any sales number or anything like right. that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the time when we were actually sweating it was back in January and February. And we did our work then and we've we've been listening to the album since then. So we've been confident like, you know, now it's out. Now everybody else gets to gets to hear it too so we just kind of sit back and watch it all unfold how much time goes into putting together an album like this i, I know i don't even know if you can answer that can you the whole life up till now yeah I mean, yeah you know because you the, the writing draws on experiences from years but just from the time that you have the song list or the you know a, a master list of songs that might make the album and you start going into the studio how much time passes between then and actually having a finished product ready to be pressed or put on itunes or whatever the actual studio process for this album went pretty fast for us. Um, I mean, once like things were arranged and we decided which songs were going on, like the actual tracking, uh, we got in studio and everyone really molded together really, really well. And that part of it was actually really fast for us uh, this this time. I think we were done tracking in two months, and then it maybe took another month to mix and master. Which yep. is great because the faster it goes, save you a lot of dough up front, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, For sure. Lee, did I Lee did I hurt your feelings the other day? No, because, no, no. I, I, yeah, I, I did. It's good. I, I, did, I had to. It helps. It helps my voice. No, not at all. Come on. I, I, I was. We were, we were talking. We we're joking. It's like, okay, yeah, we're gonna have Pop Evil, and and then uh, you know they'll they'll come in at ten, feelings. and then we'll leave oh. at twelve thirty when when <laughs> when Lee gets up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good point. People want to hear from everybody. Sometimes I'm, just, I'm used to no, 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 I'm used uh-oh. to doing no, the interviews. I just got goes, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I thought uh-oh. it was good. I thought it was good. I like it. Shows your love. No. Man. Tough no. discipline. Tough no. discipline, Zane. 
I love Dude, that. no. You're a hell of a talker. You're a salesman. Oh, man. If this all ended today. <laughs> now, I, you know, I've heard, we've heard yeah. from Lee over the years. Yeah. We've heard from all of you. But Lee, obviously, yeah. we've heard him uh, the most. As that, that was the reference earlier. Right. If this all ended today, if Jesus came down and said, Pop Evil is no more. You yeah. will all do different things. <laughs> I think Lee would have a very quick transition to selling anything. You could sell cricket phones in the mall. Well, no, hell, you I, did do I, that. I used to do you that. used yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were because I've heard the stories about you. It was Nextel phones. I've heard the stories about you. You would yeah. sell it, and then you would get hot chicks to do the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. I just did these sales. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and push this it's through. Too much writing. Too much. Yeah. Writing. Yeah. <laughs> See, he's I such a charmer. I did do that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> what about the one time I, I remember this story in the mall? This is Rivertown Mall. If you're listening. I remember it was back in, I think it was 04, 05, and, and someone was walking. And we were in a kiosk, and Dave was with me. And, and we saw a fan by far walking by the children's player. He had a Pop People shirt, an okay. old school one on. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're like, oh, man, we got the blues on and the khakis. We literally hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. he went by. Like, if you would have been walking up top, you would have seen a bunch of guys laying in the kiosk. Like, <laughs> like, Don't let them look at us, man. Don't let them look at us, man. All of your rock awesome. credibility right out the yes, window with yes. the khaki no, pants. But it doesn't your... matter anymore. Like no. If that happened, that you guys need to know that. It was incredible. Hell, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That is Not good to mention stuff. all the stories we all have probably in this town. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have Absolutely. missed you, Grand Rapids. So, Terrible. so on the road right now, right? Uh, I mean, yes. Matt, always like after tonight's show, where do you go next? Columbus, Columbus, Back Columbus. On the range uh, for th- this weekend. Yeah, we play tomorrow morning, eleven ten calls. Jesus. Bus calls like before. I was like, Chris, how late are we gonna be able to go go to the bars? So he goes, Bus call probably before one a.m. I'm like, what? It's Grand Ooh. Rapids, man. Oh, man. Oh, that is brutal. You guys gonna do Hail to the Victors like uh, oh. Chad Smith from the Chili Pep- yeah. Peppers while you're. We no. rock. Well, you know, it's funny. No. We, 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 we just talked to him. He referenced that we we, we had him on. Um, well, these guys would do the big house. And he uh, he he referenced how when he was in Columbus, he sang "Hail to yeah. the Victors" as he was leaving. It's a very fat, famous YouTube clip. And he talked about how badly he was booed and how how <laughs> how much he enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. afraid yeah. of the booze. I've got a U yeah. of M base. I was thinking about playing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> booze don't scare me. I mean, I can I can handle words. It's the you know the tw- tens of thousands of people there throwing that, things right that scares me a little yeah, bit that, that might be bombed. a little bit of a large crowd <laughs> yeah. for that i mean i'll announce right now i'm a huge michigan fan i'm not afraid of that but yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but still i think one thing we've learned like you know of course running the big house i think guys can relate is just all our great fans we have in the state of ohio that yeah. really support us and it's it's just a respect thing for us like mm-hmm. we you know we grew, i've had so many crazy diehard ohio state fans that are like dude I hate the Michigan song you guys do, but I just love pop evil. And like, what do you say to that? You know, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we yeah. won't play it. We won't play it. Yeah. Yeah. I no. say, you know. I really like you, but I still hate the Buckeyes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I love the fans. Right. So the touring, I mean, I, you know, the more we've, we've talked before about the more we've learned about life as a rock band and, and you know, to, especially where you guys are. That's rough. I mean, do you still love it? Like, what do you do to have fun and stay fresh so that it's not, oh my God, what hotel am I in or, or whatever? Because that's uh, what I think uh, that's well. where it starts to be become drudgery if you stop having fun with it right um Matt? You know, i just got a uh, a little charcoal grill the other day so i've been like grilling every day that it's been nice out i did kebabs the other day we did fajitas we did like <laughs> you're, filet you're cooking for the, the band day. he really is our band cook he's awesome you've he's come really a out. long ways from quitting the band and then walking 20 miles in florida and sleeping under a bridge <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I gotta forget about that. Didn't even remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I did what? That, um, I didn't I, make that up, did I? No, no, no. no okay. That's completely that's accurate. Okay. Um, you know, and Chachi and I have done other stuff too. Like we we've reached out on social media and you know talked to talked to people with like Harleys. You know, so we get it set up. So if we roll into a city, you know, someone who's generous enough like donates a Harley or two for the day so we can go out and Bike ride rides. and see the city and oh, that's you know, brilliant. get some winning art. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. very smart. This is a brilliant move. We Harley got borrowing, it, yeah. We got it locked down in Sweden, too, when we were out there shooting the music videos. We got to go uh, on a little Harley ride like up to a castle. It wow. was 28 degrees. Yeah, the the, the oh, lady giving it to us is like, now you guys know that we're, we're, she was like more than willing to give us the bikes like before the place opened. We can bring them back whenever we wanted. She didn't ask for like any information at all. And she's like, you guys know it's going to be like 29 degrees in the morning. And I was like, you know that we might not ever get to drive right. Harleys in Sweden to a castle to yeah. shoot a music yeah. video again in my life. Yeah. Right, right. I will gladly bundle up and get frosted <laughs> yeah. for that. I'll dress warm. With the video, how do you end up 
in Sweden to do that video. That's a kind of a long story. You know, we had um. That's did, all right. You're here. You'll she's tell it. Right, right, right. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> well, we ended up, you know. True, true, true. I'll give you the. I'll give you. Sorry, Well, fine. So I'll give you the long version. <laughs> well, you know, Sweden became a country in 1684. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> their, main, their main export are, is fish. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you did a, 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 a like a video of Bill Steffen and Lee telling stories? <laughs> <laughs> like somehow Lee's version of this story includes him reading the girl with the dragon tattoo right, yeah. out loud to us. That's actually that's actually I was gonna do that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna do that. That was a, no, but we ended up you know we had the, you know Johan he's an amazing director out in Sweden and um, we had some opportunities where you know we thought we could push the envelope and uh, if you guys don't know that Sweden is the first country that really broke pop evil outside of the United States. No, I had so no idea. No idea. We Didn't wanted to we wanted to give back you know as far as supporting that them and, and the scenery and of course give our states fans um something different to look at and it just turned out incredible. Yeah. So how does that incredible happen? Incredible scenery that that yeah, uh, castle. The video is yeah. awesome. And that, like that just being there like you said how many chances do you get to be in a Swedish castle? Right. How does it happen? I mean, I assume it's all, it, it starts on the internet or whatever, but all of a sudden, you like one day, did you find out, holy S, we're, we're big in Sweden? Because it's kind of hard to wrap your head that. around. We kind of joked about that. And, you know, like it, it starts like even just in your own city and then your own state. And then, you know, we went over there and people are like, you know, they're spinning your single in Sweden. So we went over there and played the, the bandit boat. And when we played Last Man Standing, I couldn't even hear Lee in my like in ear monitors. The yeah. crowd was so loud. Wow. What and a rush. I just had no idea that like, it, you told him to shut up. You're quiet. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to play a concert here. Americans <laughs> trying to rock. Hello. <laughs> but it's it's really crazy, you know. And the new single we've been really lucky is uh, I think it's top twenty in Canada right now too. So it it's getting spread around. It's really it's yeah. It's kind of crazy and overwhelming to think like even think about. I mean, I don't I don't really think about it until we get over there. But it's got to yeah. be surreal though. Like when you Very. when you're getting ready to go out on stage, you're like, did they? Wait, what? What are they doing? You know, yeah, we're a bunch yeah. of guys from Grand Rapids, and there's thousands of people ready to scream and oh, sing man. along with every song. It's we fantastic. Did, it's what we, you... did a, we did a cruise on the Baltic Sea though in the middle of uh, November. I don't recommend it. No, a little cold. Very ice. Chilly. <laughs> yeah. it sounds terrible. Cold. Living in Michigan, I don't think I've ever felt so cold. Oh, it was a little it brisk. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I will say that Swedish meatballs are a real thing over there, and it's amazing. No, it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. are there, now, most of the people are blonde-headed, right? Is that is that true, or is that just I, a we myth? We didn't see any the first uh, time. We're from Grand Rapids. Everybody's Dutch here. It's yeah, not that's that much true. different. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> about the same. In my mind, the people rocking out to you in Sweden, though, look like a Mentos commercial. The, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, no, that's no. what it looked like. The band that we uh, kind of was like our... Are like our our foot in the door to get over there. Avatar. I mean, their lead singer's like. I mean, he's got to be like six five. Yeah, he's a large so human sure. being. Yeah. And he's like the lead singer of this awesome metal band. And he's like a substitute teacher on the side. No kidding. It's, it's really? awesome. It's incredible. Who have you met because of rock and roll that has been awesome, or that you thought would be awesome and actually, they weren't? Yeah. There you go. I'm not going to say that one. <laughs> There's okay. a lot of awesome ones. I don't, there's not really a ton of people that weren't really. Everyone's pretty supportive. So yeah. Far. Yeah, I, I think uh, blown away by somebody. Tom Crabtree was pretty awesome. Who was that? Uh, he was a tight end for the Packers. Now he's for the Bucks. Okay. He's from uh, Miami, Ohio. Do you yeah. have any famous people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike Martin, heard of. Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I even mentioned yesterday, you know, Bob Ritchie. It's like he's yeah, someone who sure. we've gotten to know. Yeah, like a that. Lot the story about how uh, you ended up on Kid Rock's uh, cruise that time. You, <laughs> that this is, you told us this off the air one time years ago, and we were in yeah. the back room at the machine shop. It it started out as you're just hanging out, right? Yeah, we we went out to dinner with him. It was myself and Tony at the time, and and our buddy Kevin. And uh, he just says, "Hey, what are you guys doing in April?" I said, "I I don't think we have anything planned." He said, do you want to play a cruise? Yeah. And at that point, I think it was already sold out. You know, he obviously didn't need us to sell tickets or anything, but, like, offered it you. up, he had an extra you. slot. Yeah. And, uh, like, literally, he called his manager. The next morning, it was done. Boom. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and you guys, didn't you have that feeling like, oh, that was nice of him to say that. It'd be cool if it really worked out, where you're kind of like, yeah, right. I don't want to get my hopes up, which is a reasonable thing to do. Right. It was, I mean, it was done before I woke up the next morning. Oh, wow. I think it's cool, too, that when you meet somebody that's, you know, quote unquote famous, but it makes it that much sweeter when, you know, like referencing Kid Rock, like when they're from Michigan. Even if you like want to try to pretend ever like anyone that you're bigger than where you're from like yeah. it means the most when people where you're from yeah. show mm -hmm. you love that yeah. definitely hits home i think and i'm guessing yeah. you guys find and, and i think we do too the people who are famous are almost always cool 
it's their management that clutters things up. But you guys get to cut through that because you're hanging out with yes. yeah. the artists backstage okay. or wherever you're seeing them. Artists recently, I think of Corey Taylor. Uh, we just we played with Stone Sour, and he was one of like the nicest, most down to earth, cool people I've ever met. Unless you put his wife in a headlock. Right, then he will destroy you. Yeah. Oh wow, you might have seen something. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. Good to know. <laughs> that seems like good a to know. very specific, <laughs> random example. Stand up guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sure. I mean, that's all Limp hypothetical, biscuit. of course. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so uh, we were watching the the video for trenches, and uh, you know, uh, the thing is, the the woman in the video is uh, it, it's clear she's uh, she's been uh, bullied around by this thug boyfriend, and uh, so you know she's training in this thing, preparing herself. But I don't see her kick his ass at the end of it. You, you, you know, it's to the imagination. Draw well, your own I, conclusions. No, no man, I, I, yeah, we felt a little let down. I was we a little wanted blue ball. to see I mean, him get his ass kicked. Nicely, was building really sweetly, yeah. and I just wanted to see a good stiff jab to the face. We don't ever support women hitting guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in the video for uh, Boss's daughter, I, that was the one with the uh, the woman with Mick Mars, right. and then Lee, you rode away with her. Right, so in the end could, of that, so yeah, you could so carry on this theme like yeah. she would suddenly grab you, and you two could have kicked his ass. Well, it just, it just, you know, we just or make a sandwich. Or or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's more funny to watch her kick Lee's ass. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. with, but with boxing gloves on. She's yeah. like trying she to hold a butter knife down. She said, "I'm gonna kick your ass, and Lee's gonna talk to you for five hours." I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, do you get this at, at yeah, other radio stations where they pile on? All the time. Do you? Oh, no. I don't think everybody time. kisses your ass. I was going to say, that seems mm. like it wouldn't be the case. Because if we didn't know you guys, we'd be, well, no, we're kind of idiots. Yeah, we so. probably would. We alienate I a lot of people. It, so. I love it. It's all good. It's been nine weeks since we've been home. I'm just glad to be home for a minute. Yeah. And it, it really is a minute. Like, when did you get into town? Uh, we got into town two in the morning. Yeah, it was like two or two, two thirty in the morning. Oh, man. That doesn't, that doesn't even count, man. Because yeah, you guys were telling us off the air, your schedule today. You know, you're going to get to see it's, some friends and family like at 7 o'clock tonight. We're going to try to suck in all the family time we can. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, yeah, boy. Man, you guys, I almost want to put the foot down on your behalf and say, they're not doing Best Buy. They're not doing bullying. <laughs> no, they're no. going to bed. They're going to see their family. We're, we're looking forward to it. You know, yeah. we want it. We love our fans, especially here in the hometown, and it's it's yeah. important. You know, and they mean, I mean, we wouldn't be here without them, and we wouldn't have been here without, you know, our GRD fans that started it all for us. You guys are great. Yeah. You guys are the best. I was just telling my wife, and we've reminisced about this on the air so many times, but how we met you the first time and mm -hmm. in a conference room down the hall, and you yeah. came in with a laptop, and you're like, hey, watch this video. And we're like, yeah, go. Die. I don't want to remember. Spend, I want to go home. That. It's noon. Yeah. I've been here for eight hours. I want to go home. But yeah. it's just amazing to see the transformation. So people today sure. at Best Buy, what's the time on that? Three to five. Right? Three to five. Three to five. Yeah. Best Buy. And, um, you know, of course, we're um doing some meet and greets. We're going to try to hang as long after, you know, who knows what's going to happen after the show. But Seven Dust and us, it's incredible. It's been awesome so far all this week with Seven Dust. It's been awesome. So it's, 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 one, it's, one, it's one rock and roll show. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And it, it's the Best Buy. On uh, East yeah, Beltline, belt line, next right, to 28th yeah, right Street, by, right by the Orbit Room. When yeah. you guys, when you guys lay out the 12 songs for the CD, is there, um, is it done with, you know, like when you lay out a, a concert set list, you're going to look at, okay, let's do this, this, let's build a crescendo, maybe let it settle, build another crescendo. Yeah. Do you do that when you do uh, laying? Is it is there a science to putting songs yeah. on a CD? It's like Boggle or picking names out of a hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just do it random, yeah. like bingo. <laughs> yeah, because you know you 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 let you. you Listening to it, you hear those intensities as it picks up, as it lays down. Yeah, it... we want it just like our stage show, you know, like we want to take you on a journey from point from the first song to the last song. We want to take you somewhere emotionally. That's why we got into it in the first place, you know. It's awesome. So it's really good. Together. Thank Sounds you, excellent, it. man. Yeah. I tell you Thank what, you. you guys must are must be really happy with the final We're stoked. It's been a the long, final product. Long wait waiting for it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. It, you know, where you are now, back to where you were. I'm, what, when do you think that was when you came in? Do you know the year? That was uh, like 2006. That's what I was going to guess. 06. 06. Yeah. What would you, if you could talk to you then, what would be the biggest surprise you could tell old oh, Lee and the, uh, old Matt and the rest of the I, band about, like that you had no idea that you'd be getting into if I, it progressed to where it is? I've said it since day one. You know, I always wanted to get out of the city. I always wanted to leave. And now that we, when you really know how the commitment to break a new band, I mean, we have to be gone. I mean, 250 shows we played last year alone. So, I mean, do the math. You're not home at all. So yeah. all you want to do now is just get home. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean, and we could live anywhere we want with friends, with whatever you want to do now with all the people we know. Yeah. But you know, for me personally, I mean, the guys all probably feel differently. I just, I just love GR. I, just, I love that's it. Where I grew up. Mm -hmm. that's it, you yeah. Know, so, how about you, Matt? It, you know, looking back to then, I mean, you were still working at. Were you working at the bowling ball factory? 
or at Brunswick? Um, no, actually, that was my dad. That was your dad. Okay, uh, but yeah, I, I worked in a <laughs> shop. Did you know, like, ran parts and everything like yeah. that. I'm trying to think, man. You know, like, or is it exactly what you expected? Maybe that's not a fair question. Like, it's it's everything you expected and more. There wasn't anything. You know, I, I really don't think I knew what to expect when I when I got into it. It was kind of one of those like, well, here I am. In in two thousand six, would you been? Mm-hmm. Were, were you like twenty, twenty one? Oh God. Uh, well, let me help. What I, are I you now? Math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how old are you now? <laughs> uh, twenty seven. Okay, you're yeah, right. right. So about about no, twenty. You about twenty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the thing is though that back then when you guys came in, you know. Uh, not exactly a wet behind the ears band. But you guys were pretty, pretty raw, but it still sounded great. You're everybody, right. everybody right. still loved it. You, there, there's no way anybody could look back on those and say, on those days and say, "Oh yeah, well they've come a long way." They were pretty. You guys were pretty great back then. Yeah, think, well, we we're a well seasoned local yeah. band. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and you didn't time. know what you didn't seem like it though at all. There was no local. I mean, it just seemed like God. These guys are. Everybody could see it, see it coming right. a mile away that things were going to happen. For well, you. we'd always heard that, but when you're actually in it, you don't you don't think that you yeah. know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't happen fast enough yeah. for you. And yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think another thing though that was shocking is just how different the rock industry would be. You know, we grew up in the heyday listening to GRD. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'd have all been surprised by that too. Yeah. Yeah. Nineteen Wheels. You know, some of the great bands mm-hmm. that came before us locally that you know, we all were inspired by. And rock was so big. I mean, I yeah. remember especially being from Muskegon, Matt and I going to the Muskegon Summer Cell and seeing fuel or seeing um you know a puddle of mud or whoever was playing or just being electrified by it it's just so rock heavy and now yeah. it's so saturated that um it's it's harder for yeah. bands it's yeah. harder to we always get oh what would you recommend to another band and it's just i don't know what to recommend them sometimes it's just don't give up it's just there's so much yeah. competition yeah it's so even, much harder to break that um you know we feel very lucky to be where we're at yeah even the the pull of radio i think that's something that really shocked me was like when we first started touring on, you know, 155, you know, that single yeah. went nationwide, you know, but we're traveling around doing these shows and I'm thinking, man, I keep seeing our song climbing up the charts. Why aren't there like 5,000 people here? You know, right. I thought like, yeah. I didn't realize it was like, take song after song after song, right. like of being in people's faces and yeah. really like laying into it. I remember too. being in, you know, Seraph when these guys were already in Pop Evil in Grand Rapids and trying to be on up and coming and just thinking like, mm-hmm. man, once you get on the radio, you've made it. As yeah. soon as yeah. you, and then like That's transitioning from one band to the next and realizing not only, you know, do we still have a long way, we have a lot of goals that we want to accomplish, but how far away yeah. the, you know, my old band was. And yeah. Not, not to discourage any new bands, but like, I really thought that was just the be all end all. Like, yeah. Once you run the radio, mm-hmm. it's you, over with. You were yeah. at that stage where you don't know what you don't you know. No, exactly. But, and there was a time where, when you got on the radio, oh, we did it, we did it. But yeah, that I don't know when that left. Sometime in the nineties, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's you know, but Do everything you, happens in cycles. You know, we're positive that hopefully, you know, things come back around, and you know, we can be part of those yeah. bands that help bring rock back. You know, so we we take that very seriously. When you play gigs, like you know, it's one thing here, and maybe answer here as well. Do you still play stuff off those old old albums, like 155? Trying or? not to. Yeah. Not, no, but no, we do. We do. I, I we mean, play. I yeah, I wonder. Well, like, you're... like if you go yeah. play Nashville, a city where just picking one at random, where you don't have the heritage, you weren't a local band, you know, but I'm sure you've played there for years or wherever. Any city, you guys know. Um, well, are you that, gonna play those songs? We do a lot together. But I know Matt's really stepped up and really, you know, that's kind of become his role on the road. You know, he really div- dives into the set list and he really takes spends a lot of time with it to make sure they're done up and pitches it to us. Do you guys feel like you want to play this? And yeah. understanding where their tunings differently, where my voice might be, depending mm-hmm. on how many shows we played. I mean, we just went on a run and we played like eleven shows straight. So yeah. wow, you know, I mean, your vocal. I mean, imagine. Oh, that's doing, true. You know yeah, I mean? mm-hmm. like eight yeah. hours straight, three yeah. days off this whole month, right? Three, three days, three days yeah. off the whole month. So I wow. mean, it's, it's definitely a lot of wear and tear. If you're yeah. not ready. That's tough if you're singing mm. ballads, I would think. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I think we talked about yesterday, too. It, it comes down not even just to what we want to do, but, you know, like yesterday we did an interview and we talked about once you release an album, like as an artist, the the songs are no longer ours. Like, yeah, they belong to the listeners. And so it doesn't matter what, what we want to play as much as it matters what our fans want to hear. Right. So yeah. if right. there's two people at that show that want to hear 155, then it's our responsibility to, you know, to pay homage to those people and you know, repay them with, you know, what they want to see and what they expect to hear of us. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny to hear you say that because I remember when we were in New Jersey, we gave away these tickets to Neil Young, who was playing this outdoor amphitheater. And it was yeah. it was a big ticket. You know, I mean, a lot of people listening now aren't going to be into Neil Young, but for a classic rock audience, oh, that's that's a, a who's who. Mm-hmm. And so sure. people won these tickets. They're doing everything to win these tickets and people buying these tickets like 70 bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. 
They go, and he plays for two hours and doesn't play any Neil Young classics. And so oh, everybody is all just new stuff. pissed. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to hear Cinnamon and Girl, and he won't play it. Yeah, I mean, that's right. just yeah. that reminds is, me of Step Brothers, where they, yeah. only, they only play the Billy Joel or whatever the cover band. They only play the the eighties. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strictly eighties <laughs> <80s> Joel. <laughs> 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 so it's just that that's, well, that feels selfish. So I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you have the flexibility now. Of course, when you're promoting a new album, you're going to play a number of songs from that new album, and you're right, yeah. you end up throwing material away. Yeah, and you're like, oh sure. God, we can give things. We can let things rest a little bit, you sure. know? There are yeah. a lot of factors to take in, you know, whether we're on tour with somebody else opening for them, you know, like if we're on, long we on tour with Three Doors Down, our set's going to be different than if we're on tour with Five Finger Death Punch. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, which oh, happened yeah. within yeah. this past year. Um, and, of course, different if we're doing a headlining show, too, depending on what market we're in, what songs we're big in that market. You know, there's a, a lot to do with it. It's not just... Pulling names out of the hat. It, like it's that. a nightly thing. Our yeah. set list changes Literally. every night. And I think after every single show, we each take, you know, probably 10 to 15 minutes as a band, like directly from stage yeah. to the bus, change like while we're changing our shirts and everything, we talk about the show, what could be better, what we could have done different. Yeah. Every single night. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's the growth in, in the three yeah. albums that we've dropped. You know, I think there's been a more sense of respect that we have for each other that we that we always cared about each other. we've always been close but especially with this new lineup you know chachi nick being new um you know having been in this band since the beginning it's never been more supportive and and exciting to be with these guys than it has and, I, and to see it kind of get tighter internally yeah is rare for a band and you know hopefully it continues for us it yeah. used to be a lot more like we're off stage let's do shots and have a party and now it's like let's get focused what did we do wrong what can we do yeah. better that's good and we're pros a, a you're beer. pros tell you what it's, Definitely yeah. not the it's, act, it's things like that yeah. that have that will keep you healthy. Like uh, things like you described oh. doing shots. We'll take this picture of Axl Rose. Dave, <laughs> right, if you right. Dave, right. you're getting this on video for the guys to see. Have you seen this? <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, seen, I've oh, seen. Yeah, I know what's seen happening. Seen yeah, you know, is the reason the band yeah. broke up is he ate the rest of the members. That's right. This is uh, for, uh, from a, a, a list that we had at FreebirdHotWings.com. Things that will make you feel really old. This is what Axl Rose used to look like. Right. And this is what he looks like now. There is there's, <laughs> That is Axl Rose. Can you believe that? Am, am I the only one that thinks he looks better fruits. now? That's not a good sign for a singer. <laughs> no. That's living hard right there. Is that's that really happened. him or yeah, is that no. Chris Farley? Yeah, right. That's yeah. what I thought. It looks that's like him. Really yeah. Isn't that a that's bummer? Real. You know he's what sitting a on a metal that, folding chair singing songs. Is that the Waffle songs. House? Jeez, that is wow. rough. I mean, his he face looks actually like looks a grizzled old country artist. looks like an anus. His head looks a little conier. I don't even think the skull cap really. Yeah. He's holding the hair on. Something. Uh, Man, Pop Evil, tonight at the Orbit Room, before that yes. at Best Buy on East Beltline near 28th Street. And then uh, we're going to go bowling together. Can't wait. That's going to be something. Yeah, how about that? Who's yeah. the best bowler? Marketing and Nate, dude. Dave, Dave, Dave man. Dave, there wasn't Dave, even a moment Dave. of hesitation. Yeah. That's your thing, but Dave. I do have a bowling <laughs> tattoo that deadly. looks like a penis. You have a bowling tattoo that looks like a penis? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> does. Oh, my God, because the ball. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got it for my dad. Have you say it out loud? Oh I got God. it for my dad. Okay. The ball, the pin, nuts, twig. Okay. Dad, this is a tribute for you. <laughs> you know how you it's like exactly how I the, br- the proudest day of his life. It even says dad in it, like dad. in the shape of the Brunswick logo. Oh, dad, this hilarious. is for you. You know how you like penis, but don't want anyone to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. I love it. I love it. Guys, it's great yeah, it's seeing funny. you. It, it's, it's always really, good to see you guys. This yes. sounds stupid, but it's a yeah. joy to watch the success and see the growth and 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 sort of reminisce about that. Uh, You're right. I, that I'm, does I'm, sound stupid. It does. Like, <laughs> we were we were in Birmingham last week. Yeah. You talk about rock radio. Uh, uh-huh. Just a quick side note: R- uh, Birmingham, Alabama, city of almost nine hundred thousand people, right. didn't have a new rock radio station for almost three years until this one was signed on, and then. Uh, about eight, eight or nine months ago. So we're driving from the airport to the hotel, and we're going to go do a bunch of event, events. And the PD says, oh, yeah, here's your promo. And our promo finishes, and it's you guys. And that happens it. every time it. we go mm-hmm. to a market where yeah. it's a new rock station, if it's, unless it's classic rock, whatever. It sounds ridiculous, but congratulations to you guys, too, man. You yeah. guys are all over the place killing right. it. It's going to end. Right with us, it's going to yeah. end. Don't yeah. worry, dude. Let's of, take it over together. Of the two entities, one room on of the, the group's success is surprising, oh. and that would be the ones over <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. It is so over. This show is so done. <laughs> I'm they, not kidding. They can't wait for us to start losing so they can kick us out. You got me listening online. I knew the trick. I'm watching. Y'all. You guys don't know like how many people I still get coming up to me asking about you know. Like, oh, oh. Remember the that time when you hosted the show with the guys? Oh, like, that was a blast. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Are you, you really up friends all night? with them? Oh, that <laughs> yeah. was so sweet, no. dude. Yeah. Hot Wings was gone. Matt yeah, calls. I'll come in. We're like, oh, all right. Uh, he just came in yeah. and just sat in Hot Wings chair. It was awesome. <laughs> Listening while my baby's being born, laughing. That was great. <laughs> the new That's album awesome. is. 
called Onyx. It's in stores and online now. You can get it everywhere. Get it today yeah. at Best Buy. Get it today. Get Over it by twice. the Orbit Room. Yeah, buy it twice. Buy yeah. it online and then buy the hard copy buy and it. get it signed. Fair yes. copy. I like that. Thanks, guys.